Okay, what we're going to go over here are calendar stock option spreads. In particular, we're going to discuss uh, some real world, some 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 things, uh, very important things that the textbooks leave out, right? So we'll we'll show the textbook definition, and then and then we'll make it more realistic. Uh, this presentation is on the you know financial education site, so calendar stock option spreads. In case you want to see it, the URL is is uh, down here. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at calendar stock option spreads, and as an example, uh, we're going to we're going to look at this spread here. So. Uh, we're going to sell a 50 strike price call option that expires in one month, and we're going to buy um, option with the same strike, uh, but it, you know, same stock, obviously, same everything, except it um, expires in two months. Right? Um, the underlying is so. Um, here's going to be the option premium uh, for these. The you know the price of these two options, uh, and these premiums were calculated using the Black Scholes model. Uh, with, um, I assume, an underlying stock of 49. So we're putting this spread on when the underlying stock is at $49, a volatility of 30% and a risk-free rate of 1%. Of course, because we are um, selling the, 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 the short-dated option and buying the long-dated option, we know this is going to be a debit spread, meaning it's going to cost us money, right? So it's going to cost us... Um, uh, 71 cents today to put this on and that's going to be our maximum loss we were not going to lose um, we're not going to lose more than that so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at this uh, the p l on this spread uh, at the expiration of the first option right uh, so what we're going to do when we're calculating these p ls is assume um, we, you know the first option the short dated option uh, is expiring now, which which means we're either going to have to pay or or pay pay nothing. It's just going to be the, if if it has an intrinsic value, we, we pay that or, or zero, and then we're going to sell uh, this second call option that we bought, right? And that's how we're going to calculate the 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 P and L. Uh, here's uh, just some helper functions that are be used through this. Uh, this is just the Black Scholes call value on a non dividend paying stock um, in Python, and then here's going to be uh, a a um, a function to calculate the spread right one thing uh, to note here if, if you want to use this function it's a python function uh, no i hard coded the uh, the um, uh, prices of the options so if you actually use this you might want to not have those hard coded and, and have the arguments for the for the the original prices at which we sold and which we bought the option um, have those arguments so they're, they're not hard coded there uh, and what we're going to do here throughout, just in case you're also, you know, learning a little bit of Python, uh, we're going to use these um, list comprehensions to uh, uh, basically, instead of for loops, to calculate the, the calendar spread for various underlying stock prices. So jumping into what the P&L will look like at expiration of the, of the first option. Um, and then again, we're selling the, 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 stock, the option that we bought. Um, this, is going to, this is going to be our P&L. Uh, you might note immediately that this looks like a butterfly, except we have this curvature here, which is because the second option is still alive, right? Um, and, you know, roughly we, we break even, um, you know, at 47 and, um, uh, and change, right? So we're going to earn a positive profit between, you know, about 47, I could find exactly, but uh, 47 and 53, right? So in here, in here we earn, earn a profit, right? And then below those two points, we, you know, we lose uh, going to a max loss of 71 cents, which is, which is what we paid or the net of uh, the net of uh, what we paid. Good. So this is, and this is, this is generally what uh, textbooks will say when they cover calendar spreads. Um, uh, additionally, you could note that uh, obviously if we had bought this option and sold this, right, then this, this P&L would just be reflected about the axis. Um, and I'll also note that we did this with, with calls, but we can create the same thing with put, put call parity. We, you know, what we can do with calls, we can do with puts. Uh, but this is generally where textbooks will tend to leave off, right? Uh, but there's something that's particularly not realistic about this yet. We, we, we can, we can, we can, there's, a, there's an important aspect of the spread that's not considered. And that's that we are we are assuming that the stock price changes through here, but but what this does is assume that the volatility is still that same thirty percent, 
And volatility, as you know, particularly if the stock price changes, um, vol vol the volatility, uh, it, the stock's volatility will, will um, very often change, right? Um, and, and it can change by a great deal. So to really get an idea of what's going on in the spread, we should take a look at what happens when volatility increases or volatility decreases. Now, if you sit here and think about it for a second, you'll realize, okay, well, we are short. We sold um, the option that is expiring, right? Uh, and we bought the option that, it, that, that still has one month to go, and we're going to sell that option. So, so right there, you, you should get the idea that we are going to benefit in this spread if, if volatility increases. Because as volatility increases, it doesn't increase the payment we have to make on the option we sold, but the option we still have and, and we're about to sell, um, that, uh, that's going to increase our sales price of that option if the, if the volatility is higher. So you know, that's what we should kind of think about beforehand so we can go ahead and, and um, calculate the, the, the P&L on the option if the volatility increases. So here, I'm going to assume that the volatility is now 50%. And what you can see is, sure enough, this makes um, now we, we break even roughly at 44 and, and 58, right? And previously, it was like 47 and uh, 53, right? So we have a greater interval over which we um, the spread pays us, you know, that, that we earn a positive uh, profit on the spread. You know, it's our still max loss, is still going to be 71 and so forth. But, but the idea here is this is definitely preferable. So if, you're to, if you put on this calendar spread, selling the short dated option, buying the long dated option, you are, uh, you could say, long volatility, right? You, you benefit if volatility increases. Of course, there's a two-way street. If volatility declines, we'll be worse off, right? So here, I assumed, and this is kind of a drastic drop, but volatility dropped all the way to 10%, right? Um, and nothing else changes, right? The risk-free rate is still the same and so forth. Um, but, uh, you know, so now this, this the spread never, um, we, we lose no matter what the underlying stock price is, if the volatility is 10%. So definitely, um, you know, we're better off if volatility increases, we're worse off if volatility declines. But we can make this even a little bit more realistic. And because what, 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 you know, what happens here is, well, what, we, 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 what we've observed in markets, so this was an observation, not something that theoretically, you know, happened, but it's something that we, we observed and now we have a bunch of theories as to why it happens. But vol a stock's volatility is inversely correlated with the price. So in other words, if the stock price goes up, the volatility goes down. If the stock price goes down, the volatility goes up. We term this the leverage effect. In another video, I'll go into why we term it the leverage effect and, and various explanations for it. But, um, but yeah, so, so we term this the leverage effect. And if you want to see this on any given day, just look at uh, what's going on in the S&P 500, you know, and then look at the VIX, right? So if you see the you know, ticker SPY, S&P 500, down by 2%, you're going to see the VIX up generally. Uh, similarly, if, if, the, if the stock market goes up, you'll see the VIX down. The VIX is, is, is a measure of volatility. I don't know if I covered that in another presentation, but but I should. So so you can see you know you can observe this on any on on any given day. Uh, so so to make this most realistic, what we should do is take into account this leverage effect. So what I do here is I say okay, well let's if the stock falls to thirty percent, let's say the the volatility is fifty, and if the stock goes up, you know um, this was forty nine to seventy percent, let's say the volatility is ten percent. Right, so so we calculate the PNL of this spread um, that way. So again, the stock goes down, volatility goes up. Stock goes up, volatility goes down. And what you can start to see is is this asymmetry. So this is the most realistic um, spread uh, PNL. Is uh, as the stock is de is declining, right? You know, the spread profit starts declining, but that's mitigated somewhat by the fact that the volatility is going up. Right. Uh, so so, you, you know, it, the uh, it starts it's starting to flatten out here. Right. Whereas this side is 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 steeper as the stock uh, goes up. Right. Again, we're going to start losing, but the volatility also declines. So we lose faster. Right. So the idea here is, you know, we're going to have it's a little bit flatter over here and it's steeper. Um, it's steeper over here. Uh, so so the, now what I did below here is this is kind of subtle, right? Um, you can kind of see it. Uh, but what I did was I just, I really, I changed to say, okay, well, let's, let's say 
if it goes down to 30, the volatility increases to 90, and, and, and it still goes up down to 10% at 70. Now you really see that asymmetry. So if, if, um, if the volatility is really sensitive to the underlying stock price, you, know, you start to see this asymmetry, or asymmetry, asymmetry where we um, start to break even at 41. So, and, and as, as just a, a side note, um, as, you know, so if you have a lot of these calendar spreads on, you know, a lot of money, um, then you become very interested in, in the relationship between uh, volatility and the underlying stock price. How sensitive, is, if the stock price falls, how fast will volatility increase? Um, and that's, you know, that's an area that's interesting to model, right? So um, that's a nice area for some analytics. Uh, good. So in sum, right, so we have this calendar spread, uh, looks like a butterfly. Uh, um, but you know, when you consider that you're putting on this spread, if you're, if you're buying, uh, selling the short dated and buying the long dated, um, you are long volatility. Uh, and, but keep in mind that of that leverage effect, you, the volatility will tend to go up when the stock goes down and, and down when the stock goes up. Uh, and then obviously if you were to, uh, buy the short dated and sell the long dated, everything gets reversed. Excellent. So, uh, I hope that gives you an, uh, a good idea around um, how calendar, the P&L on calendar stock option spreads uh, behave. Um, I'll leave it at that. Have a great day.